Hi, this is Mike again. Today I wanted to talk to you about one of the seven different homeschooling options out there. I am going to talk to you about one of the different methods and not any specific curriculum you might use. In order to begin your journey in homeschooling, you first need to make a decision to withdraw your kids from the public school system. Next, you need to figure out who will serve as the teacher for your kids. Will one of the parents be the primary teacher, will one of the grandparents be the teacher, or will you hire someone to teach your kids, or will you join with other parents and share a teaching responsibility? The next decision you have is to determine what type of teaching method you want to employ. That is where this video comes into play. We have attempted to identify different teaching methods. Some are Christian-based, and some are not. We recommend using a Christian-based method in order to ground your kids in God's Word and correct some of the indoctrination that your child may have experienced in public school. You can use the Christian curriculum in any of these different methods of teaching and we will discuss the different curriculum in upcoming videos on the homeschooling topic. One of the key advantages of homeschooling is also among its biggest challenges, which is the various options that are available. Homeschooling is roughly as old as humanity, but according to the Coalition for Responsible Home Education, the modern homeschooling movement can trace its roots to John Holt's writing on school at home back in the 1970s. Later came the Christian homeschool movement in the 80s and 90s. By 1993, homeschooling was legalized in all 50 states. With the swelling ranks of homeschools came an influx of different options. Homeschooling effectively set off an earthquake in the educational world. It triggered flooding in the market of school choices, with a veritable tsunami of methodologies, curricula, publishers, projects, and whatnot. Today, newcomers and veterans alike may find the sea of options overwhelming. To help you narrow down the search, we offer an overview of the leading homeschool styles. As you hear about these summaries, Think about what sounds most appealing to you and what would best suit your needs. For each homeschooling teaching method, we have included resource links. Hopefully, this gives you a better idea of how you want to structure your homeschool environment. Once you figure out the method or methods you wish to employ, you can better identify the curriculum that you will use. Homeschooling can be as traditional as school at home programs where students study the same stuff at home as do their peers at the local school. Or homeschooling can be as radical as school at home education where the lessons are student directed explorations devoid of homework and tests. We hope this rundown helps you weigh your options and find the homeschool method that best suits you and your kids. We will be presenting seven main approaches to homeschooling. For each method, we will identify benefits and drawbacks. Listen closely to each method so you can decide which one or ones you wish to employ. The seven methods we will be discussing are classical, Charlotte Mason, Montessori unschooling, school at home, unit studies, and last eclectic education method. In the next few minutes, we will introduce first, the eclectic education method with its considerations of the benefits and drawbacks. Following is a brief sample assessment describing the general personality best suited for the eclectic education method. If that method really appeals to you, and it looks like it fits your personality, then you can dig deeper by using the resource lists, which link to pertinent teaching guides, curricula, and homeschooling networks that we will provide with the video. Bear in mind, there is considerable overlap between many of these educational models. This means that there is plenty of room, if needed, to share and borrow ideas between styles. Homeschool teachers typically mix methods and materials liberally. But to avoid any unsavory creations, it's probably best to get a good working knowledge of your teaching materials and methods before splicing them with others. Now let's discuss more about the eclectic education method. Its considerations, benefits and drawbacks, our next methodology is named eclectic homeschooling. It is also called relaxed homeschooling, is the most popular method of homeschooling. The reason for its popularity is obvious. Homeschool parents love to share ideas and resources across different methodologies because their key focus is not in propping up a method or touting some favored curriculum. Their main objective is educating their child and each child is unique. Eclectic homeschooling is typically child-directed, resourceful and non-curriculum based. It has no built-in loyalties to a particular method and tends to treat curriculum options like a buffet instead of a set meal plan. Parent teachers can sample from any combination of other homeschooling methods, or resources. This model is the most flexible of all methods. You may prefer a classical classroom for a few days out of the week while reserving the rest for Charlotte Mason based activities like nature walks. Or you might adhere to the ideologies of unschooling for the liberal arts while engaging simultaneously in a rigorous school-at-home calculus class. One of the growing brands of eclectic schooling is hybrid homeschool, which combines part homeschooling and part traditional schooling. 
To find out more about it see eclectichomeschool.com and eclectichomeschool.org. So what are the benefits of eclectic homeschooling? In simple terms, when you implement eclectic homeschooling well, you can enjoy the unique benefits of each method you consult. It is well suited to mature educators, you don't have to be an expert teacher to understand what works and what does not work for your student. This method allows you to make adjustments as you see fit, like a mature educator. To make those adjustments takes a little wisdom coupled with the flexible integrity needed to shift where necessary and hold your ground on the non-negotiables. It offers flexibility, as stated above, this is the most flexible homeschool method there is. It allows you to mix and match the best parts of different methods for whatever suits the needs of you and your student. It has the most resources, eclectic method has the most resources available since most materials for other methods will also be pertinent to this model. It is very popular, this method is a common default option. As a result, it's not hard to find networks, groups, or meetups to walk with you through your homeschooling journey. The benefits of this method are many, but whenever you combine different methods or resources together, there is always the risk of importing their drawbacks or even synergizing new problems. If the eclectic method is looking like a strong option for you, make sure you read over the other methods above so you have a sense of what strengths and weaknesses might accompany each. This method needs to be used tactfully. It may have too many options. Having the most flexibility and the most resources means the eclectic method can feel too open-ended, overwhelming you with options. Other methods may create a bad mix, just because you can mix ice cream and mustard doesn't mean you should. Not all homeschool materials and methods mix well. It can create the worst of both worlds, blending conflicting educational theories may render the best of both worlds, but if it's not done right, you can get the worst of both worlds instead. It can cause issues if done too hastily, eclectic homeschool teachers risk disposing of well-planned educational strategies before understanding why certain methodologies function the way they do. Good eclectic teachers need a solid understanding of all methodologies they employ so they don't waste good resources by discarding them too quickly. Eclectic might be right for you if you are likely to mix and match different styles. You are a learn-as-you-go kind of person, and you are comfortable with the responsibility of bringing different curricula together into the same learning plan. You just can't decide between two or more methods. You'd feel trapped if you had to stick to just one homeschooling style. You have found at least two different curricula or resources that you are eager to try, but they don't fit together under one homeschooling style. You are suspicious of methods that seem perfectly sound, in theory, because you think they probably won't work in the real world without significant outside support. I hope discussing this homeschooling method was beneficial. As I mentioned before, some of the methods are set up for the Christian curriculum and others are less so. The curriculum available will be discussed in other upcoming videos. Be sure to watch our other videos on homeschooling methods. There are a total of seven methods used in homeschooling. They are classical, Charlotte Mason, Montessori, unschooling, school at home, unit studies, and eclectic education. Nehemiah Reset has produced a video on each of these methods. You should be able to find them on nehemiahreset.org, our website, and on our Rumble and YouTube accounts. We look forward to seeing you again on one of these videos or on videos on other cultural issues. Thanks for watching.